Well, good evening. It's so great to be back in your home. You have a beautiful home. It always smells like home cooking. I enjoy it. Thank you for the meal tonight. And uh, all of you who uh, took part in that, isn't that just wonderful? That is just wonderful. And I'm thankful to you for it. You know, my dad, there were uh, four boys, one girl. My dad's dad was an, an alcoholic. He was just in and out of the house. Uh, and just long enough to get my grandmother pregnant and she'd move away. They never divorced. They never divorced. Now my granddad lived with a woman the latter years of his life for 30 years or so, enough that they were called, considered common law married in, in Arkansas, but my grandmother never, never took her wedding band off, was married with her wedding band on. Uh, as all of this was going on, uh, my dad is, was the middle child, and uh, things were kind of stable for him. But uh, those just younger than him, those just older than him, things, uh, while they were raised up in the church, things happened. And uh, some of them had been baptized younger and had fallen away. Two of them had never been baptized at all. A number of years ago, I made up my mind. I'm going to get up my nerve. Because it's harder to study with family than anybody else. Have y'all noticed that? We're more, we're, we're more fearful of hurting our family's feelings or a family, uh, you know, what's getting crossed up and things. But I, I decided I love these people too much, too much to not let them know how much I love them and to, and to try to talk to them. Uh, so I talked to my aunt first, uh, the only girl in the family, and she had gone through a divorce or, uh, uh, early in her married life, and uh, she just felt like the church wasn't, didn't want her anymore. I'm, I'm just telling you her words. Just felt like the church didn't want her anymore. And so I went and I asked her, of course, you know, have you, would you study with me? And as we studied, I discovered she had been baptized, but because of this, she had fallen away, and uh, she was restored. The oldest boy in the family had never been baptized. He went away to the military. Honestly, I didn't know him very well. He's my uncle, but I didn't know him very well. And he uh, developed lung cancer, and I, I need to study. I need to go talk to him. I'm scared of him. I'm telling you, military, gruff, Always make you stand at attention in the food line. You know, you know the kind? I was scared of him. But you know, I went and I just told him, I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to be in your family. I cannot imagine what this family would be like without you. And I can't imagine spending eternity without you. Could we talk? And we studied. And he was baptized. I have a picture somewhere where he's in a wheelchair with oxygen tubes in his nose and all of that. And we rolled him wheelchair and all over in that baptistry. It took three of us and his big old son. And we leaned that wheelchair back and immersed him into Christ. And he died a faithful child of God. One was left. The others had been baptized and they, my dad and his, old, his brother closest to him, they, 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 and then there's the baby brother. He's still living. And, but I have, one, I have one more uncle. His name was Dub. And my girls lovingly called him the old grouch. I mean, at all family reunions, he's the grouch. He's, the, he's a softy when it came right down to it. But he was a grouch. And I was scared to death of him. I was scared to death of him. But he had never... To my knowledge, had never been baptized, and so I went and I could the same approach. I cannot imagine. We spent I've spent all every, all of my life knowing you and loving you, and I cannot imagine going to heaven and you not being there. Can we talk? And we studied, and six weeks ago, last Sunday, 
He was baptized into Christ. Now last Sunday, in the afternoon, terrible accident. Terrible accident. He was at med flight to UAMS. Uh, he's been on life support ever since. And the family today, this afternoon, decided, okay, we're going to remove the life. We're going to move the life support. And as soon as they did, he passed away. He passed away. Now I'm telling you, folks, study with your family. Go study with them. They'll let you. Don't be afraid. Use this approach right here. Or if you've got a better one, use it, okay? But use this approach. But target your family first, okay? I'd say target your family first. Then you got someone that you know that is just like family, is just like family. Of course, go to them. If there's someone attending church with you, maybe sitting on the pew with you, this is the time to say, could we study? Could we study? They'll agree to it, okay? All right, I got to this Wednesday and next Wednesday, right? We got a lot of ground to cover. So we're going to get started. How, uh, here, here's the way I review. As, we, as, as I go back every week and I sit around people's dining room tables, I always review to them with them a little bit of what, what we've studied and where we're at. And I just use the latter to review. We have learned that it's God's will for us to believe in Jesus. Yes or no? That's God's will. We've learned that it's God's will for us to love Him with all our heart and to obey Him. Yes or no? That's right. That's God's will. We've learned that it is God's will for us to repent or to change. It starts with a change of mind, change of heart, which is going to result in a change of life, change of actions. But it's God's will that we repent. Yes or no? Are we in agreement? That's God's will for our life. We've learned that it's God's will that we confess or acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes or no? Yes. That's where we're at. That, that's our review, okay? You, you might add to that a little bit or whatever, but now we're, we're into the blue sheet, okay? Lesson number two. And we're going to move a little faster, perhaps, unless you have something. If you want to say something, you want to add something, you, something may not be clear, or you just think, hey, I can make it a little more clearer. By all means, speak up, okay? Because this is just our class. So here we go. We get started. And the first verse we're going to look at is Matthew chapter 16, verses, 5, uh, verses 15 through 17. Matthew 16, verses 15 through 17. I don't know whether it's going to come up, so I'm going to quote it for you, okay? And Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. That just means Simon, son of Jonah. Bar, Bar just means son of. Remember there's a guy in the Bible, in Acts chapter 11, we introduced to him. His name was Joseph, but the apostles nicknamed him Bar-Nabas, son of encouragement. It just means son of. Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but by Father which is in heaven. Okay? So, how did Peter, what, what was Peter's acknowledgement of Jesus? That he's what? You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Right? You're the Son of the living God. Where did Peter get that? Where did he get that information? Did he get it from men? Remember, Jesus had just asked them, who do men say I am? Some say you're, some say you're Elijah or Jeremiah or John the Baptist or one of the other prophets. That's what men say. But you didn't get this from men, Peter. Where did, you, where did Peter get it? But my... You got it from my Father who is in heaven. So is this going to be right? You know this is right. Who is Jesus? You're the Christ, 
the Son of the living God. Here's the question. Was Jesus pleased with Peter's acknowledgement or confession? What? Yes, blessed are you, right? Yes. Will Christ be pleased if you make the same confession today? Sure He will. Sure He will. Can you be saved by only wanting to be saved, desiring to be saved? Can you be saved that way? Well, I just want to be saved. No. No. We've already learned more than that. You're going to have to believe in Him, aren't you? So, can we be saved by just desiring to be saved? Or believing only? Will that, will that produce salvation? Or, or confessing Christ only? No. Of course not. But, but whether or not you know the answer to that, yes or no, right now, let's just take a look at, at the next question. Mark 16, 15 and 16. They'll, they'll get caught up with us in just a second, okay? Those of us in the Lord's church, we know this one, don't we? Jesus said unto His disciples, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be condemned. Okay? You ready? So is there anything else besides believing that I've got to do? Well, just listen to this verse. This is Jesus speaking. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. So is there something... Can you just be saved by believing only? No. You know, you'd have to have a preacher explain that away, wouldn't you? You'd have to have a preacher help you misunderstand it. It's the way I put it. You know, and there's plenty that try. There's plenty that try. But Jesus is our teacher, right? Jesus is our teacher. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. All right? So here's our question. Is salvation promised to those who believe and are baptized? Yes or no? Yes. Don't be ashamed. Yes. Yes. Everyone in agreement? That's what Jesus said. All right? In addition to believing and loving Him and repenting and confessing, is it God's will that you be baptized? Yes. yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, okay, we can go to our answer sheet, right? We can do, go to our little worksheet, right, to our ladder. And we have something else we can add to our ladder. The next rung to the ladder, you see Mark, uh, Mark 16, 15, and 16. What would it be there? Be baptized, right? It's God's will that we be baptized. So you can write, we've, we've learned. Jesus says our teacher, we've learned. Jesus wants us to be baptized. Baptized. Okay, so you can put that in there. Now, now is that something you can do? Is it? Is it something you want to do? Is it something you're going to do if you haven't? Because... If you're not, you know, what are we going to do about that left-hand rung of that ladder? Who are the ones who are going to go to heaven? Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. Is this the will of the Father for you to be baptized? Yes. Will you go to heaven if you're not baptized then? If you don't do the will of the Father. No. No. So we don't get angry over this any more than we would get angry over being told you've got to believe in Jesus. That's just the will of God. Right? Being baptized, that's just the will of God. So we don't get angry over this. But you know why people get angrier at this point? Because preachers have messed this up. Amen? Jesus didn't mess it up. But preachers have messed us up. 
Now, who are we going to listen to? The preacher or to Jesus? Jesus. Thank you. Jesus, all right? It's Jesus' will that you be baptized. Okay? All right, we're back to the blue sheet. Back to the blue sheet. We're down to uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans 6, verse 23. Okay, here we go. We know this one. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay? All right. Uh, in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse number 4. They're working on that. They'll get there. They'll get there. That, so, Ezekiel. That's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. Takes us a little longer to find that Old Testament stuff sometimes. But Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Here's what it says now. The soul that sins, it shall die. Did you get that? If you're not looking at it, take your time. Look it up. Don't take the preacher's word for it, teacher's word for it, okay? Here's what it says. The soul that sins, it shall what? Die. Why? Because the wages of sin is, is death. Okay? The wages of sin is death. All right, here's our question. If you don't receive the forgiveness or the remission of sins, can you enjoy God's gift of eternal life? No. No. Brother said, oh, you know, there's only one thing that can keep me from going to heaven. And that's sin. Don't make it harder than it is. There's only one thing that can keep me from going to heaven, and that's sin. I'll tell you something. There's only one person's sin that can keep me from going to heaven. And that's mine. See, I'd like to blame Brother Sido. I'd like to stand there and judge. I'd like, <laughs> whoo, I'd like to stand there on the judgment day and say, it's my wife's fault. Or it's that preacher's fault. He hurt my feelings one time. Or it's the elder's fault down there at that church. It's their fault. Or there was a member that, down there that... They just were cantankerous, and I, I'd like to blame anybody but me. But the truth is, there's only one thing that can keep me from going to heaven, and that's sin. And there's only one person's sin that can keep me from going to heaven, and that's mine. And there's only one way for me to go to heaven, and that's to have the sins I've committed forgiven. Yes or no? Ah, we're doing good. So look, uh, let's look over at our little worksheet. Remember when we were look, looking at the worksheet earlier and I asked you, can you think of a sin in your life that you could write on that cross? Did you, were, was anybody here able to write one? My problem is the cross ain't big enough. <laughs> you know, I got too many of them, right? I shared one with you, my impatience. By the way, that plumber finished today. <laughs> I am so thankful he finished today. I don't have to be impatient with him anymore. I find someone else to be impatient with now. You know? But that's just one. Listen, folks, I could write down a, a lot more. Could you? We all can. Why? Because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, whatever that sin is, if it's not forgiven, it'll keep you out of heaven. Yes or no? Whose sin is it? yours and it will keep you out of heaven and you don't want that do you i don't want it i don't want it for me you don't want it for you so it's got to be forgiven so let's look at the next question then acts chapter four or excuse me acts chapter two verse am i supposed to put 22 and four yeah. okay uh, number four acts let's do acts chapter two verse 37 through 47 hey we're there we're there. Here we go, folks. It's a good thing because this was going to be a long memory verse for me, you know. Here we go. Now, when they heard this, by the way, let me tell you what they heard. The first just before that, verse 36, it's not, it, that's okay. He's, he wasn't supposed to put it on there. But the verse just before that, listen to what he said. Peter said, 
Now let all the house of Israel know assuredly. That's just another way of saying, let all the house of Israel believe this. Let all the house of Israel know assuredly, this same Jesus whom you crucified, God has made him Lord and Christ. Believe it. That's what he's saying. Believe it. Now when they heard this, they were cut to their hearts and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter said unto them, Repent, and let every one of you, how many of them? Every one of you. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For what reason? For the remission of your sins or for the forgiveness of your sins. For, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this promise is to you. He was talking to the Jews that day. It's to you. It's to your children. But it's also to them that are afar off. As many as the Lord our God shall call. Peter probably didn't even have a a good idea about what he was saying. The Holy Spirit's le leading him to say this, right? Causing him to say it. The Peter's talking about the Gentiles, me and you. When he says, and all them that are far off. I say that because in Acts chapter 10, God had to go to a lot of trouble to get him to go to the house of a Gentile, didn't he? So he probably didn't understand what he said, but he did. And with many other words did he testify and exhort them saying, uh, why did he just stop right there at, at verse 38? That's, that's, or 39. That's what I've always wondered. But he just keeps on, just like preachers do. <laughs> and with many other words did he testify and exhort. So, you know why he did that? Because until they've done this, they're lost. Until they've done this, they're not going to go to heaven. Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. But until they've done it, they're lost. And so he, with many other words, did he testify and exhort saying, do it. Well, I, I paraphrased that, but isn't that exactly what he said? Save yourselves. Do this now. Save yourselves from this uh, untoward generation, King James Version says, from this untoward generation, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. Uh, are we supposed to go further with this? Oh, here we go. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together. They had all things common. They sold, all their, pos they sold their possessions and goods, divided them among all as, every, as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The Lord added the saved to what? To the church. Why did He add them to the church? Because they were being saved. See folks, that's what the church is. Very simply, the church is the group of the saved. Isn't that what that verse is teaching us? The church is the group of the saved. I hear what somebody's thinking. Ah, oh, you're one of those that thinks you've got to be a member of the church and ought to be saved. I'm glad you caught on. I'll go you one better than that. You can't be a member of the church unless you are saved. Because the church is the group of the saved. You just meet yourself coming and a going. This is great. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So we're in number, number four. Here's our question. Did these sinners, they had been the ones that had crucified Jesus, <laughs> had a hand in it. Did these sinners gladly accept the word and obey the command to be baptized? Did they? They sure did. They sure did. Were their sins forgiven at baptism? That's what Peter told him would happen. By the way, it's Peter saying it, but who's telling Peter what to say? The Holy Spirit. We know this is right. We know that much is right. Did the Lord add to their number, the church, daily, those who were being saved? Yes, He did. Yes, He did. So, 
Right here is a good time to go back to the cross again. Let them look at their sins and just let them think for a minute. Just let them think. I can't go to heaven unless that's forgiven. Now, when's that forgiven? I mean, you're eventually going to ask that question. Now, when are those sins going to be forgiven? When you just believe? No. No. When you just fall in love with Jesus? No. When you change your mind? And you start changing your life? Is that... Does that, take, does that take care of those things? No. But what about when you're baptized? What happens? Then they're forgiven. Is baptism an act of grace? Well, we're saved by what? We're saved by grace, right? When's our sins forgiven? When we're baptized. Is baptism then an act of grace? Sure it is. Don't... don't let anyone twist this. Baptism is God's grace being manifest. Is that something you can do? Thank God by the grace of God you can, right? Is that something you're going to do? Ah, by the grace of God, you've got the opportunity. Amen? you got the opportunity. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't our God so good to us? I can have forgiveness of sins and go to heaven. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Oh, we need to look at uh, Acts chapter 22, verse 16. We've already kind of answered the questions, but we're going to cover it. Acts 22, verse 16. This is oh, the Apostle Paul. You remember he was that Saul of Tarsus guy. This is that Saul of Tarsus guy that God sent a preacher to by the name of Ananias. Now listen, folks. If God went to the trouble to send Ananias, do you think God would tolerate it if Ananias told Saul something that's wrong? No, this is right. This is what Ananias said to him. Ananias said, Saul, now why are you waiting Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. What did, An what did Ananias, God, the Holy Spirit, through Ananias, what did Ananias tell Saul he needed to do in order to have his sins washed away? Be baptized. You'd have to have a preacher help you misunderstand this, wouldn't you? You know, it's only when men get involved in it that confusion arises. Let Jesus be your teacher. He wants you to go to heaven. He's not a babbler. He's not a confuser. He wants you to know exactly how to have your sins forgiven. Do you know how now? Sure we do. Because Jesus is the great teacher. Any questions? Anything you want to say? All right, here we go. So we're at number five, Ephesians chapter four, verses four and five. There is one body and one spirit, just as you're called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Here's your question. Is there more than one valid baptism in God's will? Not according to the Bible. There's only one valid baptism. According to the Bible. But wait a minute. But wait a minute. Men say, there's your problem. There's your problem. But men say, oh yeah, be baptized, but you're already saved before that. You just need to be baptized. You've already been saved. Now, what did we just learn? When is sins forgiven? When we're baptized. Now, which one's right? The Bible or those men? The Bible is. The Bible is. Well, wait a minute. Now, 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 now wait a minute. Baptism is not going to save anybody. What did Jesus say? He that believeth and is... 
baptized shall be saved. Now, which one's right? Well, Jesus is right, isn't he? He's right. So if a man starts teaching something different than this, which one's right, which one's wrong? Because both can't be right. Which one's right and which one's wrong? Jesus is always right. Let Jesus be your teacher. You can go to heaven following Jesus. Can't you? You can go to heaven following Jesus. Can you go to heaven following a man? Mm -mm. That's the danger. That's the danger. Okay? All right. So, anything you want to say? There's just one valid baptism. Let's see if we can find out what it is. Okay? In Acts chapter 8, verses 35 through 39, that's our next question, our next scripture. Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the same scripture, preached what? Or who? Jesus. Preached Jesus to him. By the way, had God gone to any effort to make sure that Philip got to speak to this eunuch? So whatever Philip said, would you expect that to be right? Sure. Could God take care of Philip if Philip said, I think I'll say this. And it'd be contrary to God's will. No. This is right. Whatever he says... Now, as they went down the road, they came to some W-A-T-E-R. They came to some water. Now, that eunuch, may, that man, he may have had a pitcher of water in the chariot with him. I probably would have. I'd probably had my styrofoam mug sitting in my, sitting in my chariot, in my cup holder of my chariot. He may have had some water in that chariot, but he came unto some water, didn't he? He came unto, he came to some water, and he said, See, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. Is that a part? of God's will for your life that you believe with all your heart. Yes. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you may. So he commanded. I'm supposing that's the eunuch since the chariot belonged to him. You know, if you're riding in my chariot, I stop my chariot when I want my chariot stopped. So I'm assuming that that's the eunuch. Okay? So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into that cup of water. No, no. No, both Philip and the eunuch went down into that water. So I'm, a, you know, I'm just assuming there's enough water there that they can go down in it. Yes, they went down into the water and he baptized him. Now when they were come up out of the water... So they went down into the water. They came up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip uh, so that the eunuch saw him no more. So he, I'm supposing that's the eunuch again, went on his way rejoicing. All right? So let's see what, we've, what we can learn from this. Did the eunuch desire to be baptized in water? Now, you know, once in a while, we'll hear something like this. It's spirit baptism. That's what the Lord's will for your life is. It's spirit baptism. And he went, had come to some W-A-T-E-R. He commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down into the W-A-T-E-R. And when they had come up out of the W-A-T-E-R, the Spirit of the Lord caught him away. You fell away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. Are we talking spirit baptism or water? We're talking water, folks. We're talking water here. Did Philip take the eunuch down into the water and bring him up out of the water? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So, just being... Just being as honest as we can be about it. Just being as honest as we can be. 
was, the, was water sprinkled on the eunuch? No. He was taken down into the water. He was brought up out of the water. If he needed sprinkle, he got the water out of the cup holder. Don't you think? I'm just assuming there was, may have been some water in the cup holder. Maybe there wasn't. But at any rate, we know he put him down in that water and he took him up out of that water, didn't he? Didn't he? So was water sprinkled on him? No. No. Let's look. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Romans 6, verses 3 and 4. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized, look, look at that. Paul's writing this. Watch what he says. Do you not know that as many of us, is Paul including himself in that? As many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we, Paul including himself in this, therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Here's our question. Was Paul baptized, buried, or immersed in the manner, same manner that that eunuch was that we just read about in Acts chapter 8? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Okay, it, uh, okay, so we're on the second, we're, we're over to number eight now. We're over to number eight. We've learned a lot about baptism. By the way, if you want to study some more about baptism, on the back of this sheet, yellow sheet, there's all kinds of extra scripture, okay, that'll help you out with that. Uh, right there. A lot of others that we're not going to deal with, okay, tonight, but they're there. Okay, Acts chapter, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. We're on number 8. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. While you're looking, any question? Any question? Do you think Jesus would, would want you to be confused about baptism? Is there any reason to be confused about it? No reason to be confused. Just listen to the teacher. Just listen to your teacher. Who's your teacher? Not David. Who's your teacher? Jesus. Jesus. Just listen to your teacher. That'll eliminate the confusion. Okay? That'll eliminate the confusion. Colossians 3.17 And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. In addition then, to believing and loving Him and repenting, and confessing Christ and being baptized, is it God's will that you do all in the name of the Lord rather than in the name of some man? Let's do everything in the name of the Lord. Okay? So the answer there is yes. Is yes. So let's go over. Look at our ladder. Look at our ladder. Colossians uh, 3.17. So the next rung of our ladder would be what? To do all in the name of the Lord. Okay? Not some, not, not some man. Do all in the name of the Lord. Colossians 3.17. Okay? Alright. John 17.21. John 17.21. Jesus is praying. Do you know He prayed for you? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. When things really changed for me, and I was already preaching, if you wanted to call it that, I was already trying to preach at Mars Hill. And one day, as I'm studying my Bible, I come across this prayer in John 17. And as I read it, read and really, really read it, it occurred to me. Jesus prayed for Himself first. Then He prayed for His apostles. And then He prayed for all of those which would believe on Him through their word. That would be me. Jesus prayed for me. Do you know He prayed for you? Now let's see what He prayed for. <laughs> that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world might believe 
that you sent me. Does Jesus want his followers to be one? He sure does. One, just like Jesus and the Father are one. Now that's pretty, that's in pretty good agreement, isn't it? Wouldn't you agree? That's in total agreement. They, he wants us to be one. You know why? I, I, it's not on there. I'm going to tell you why. Oh, well it is on there. Look, that the world may believe that you sent me. What does Jesus want for the whole world to believe more than anything else? That God sent him. That he's their savior if they'll accept him. But do you know why too many are turning their back on Jesus? It's because those of us who claim to be followers of Jesus can't even get along with one another. Jesus said, I want you to be one. I want you to be one. Work on it. Work on it. Be in one. You know, find a way to be one. Oh, I can tell you how to do it. I can tell you a good way to do it. If that's what the Bible says, that's what I'm going to do. Yes or no? If every one of us would just do that, if that's what the Bible says, that's what I'm going to do. We'd be one. We'd be one. So does he want that? Yes, he does. Okay, uh, let's see. Where are we? Where in the are we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're on uh, number 10, 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13. Now, I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now, I say this. That each of you says, I'm Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, or I'm of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Alright, let's see. We, we'll work through this. Does the Lord approve of denominationalism and wearing different religious names? Did he approve of it there? Some were saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Cephas, I'm of Christ, you know. Uh, no, no, he doesn't approve of, of this, okay? Does the Lord rebuke those who speak different things religiously from what Jesus and the apostles spoke? Does he? Sure he does, sure he does. So be, you know, hey, here, here's, your, here's your one. Well, I know that's what the Bible says, but that's not what it means. Let me explain it to you. What should that do? That should throw a red flag up, shouldn't it? Uh-oh, uh-oh. The Bible says this, and this guy's fixing to tell me something else. What does the Bible say? What does it say? Let's all speak the same thing. If group A believes that people are saved by faith only, and group B believes that people must believe, repent, confess, and be baptized, should both of those groups change in order to speak the same thing? Yes or no? I, I can't hear this. No. no. No, both groups don't need to change. Listen, we're to be one, but we're to be one based upon God's will for our lives, right? So if, if, if one group is in God's will, you can show it. It's in God's will. And another group is outside of God's will. Those that are in God's will don't need to change in order to be one with those outside God's will. Who needs to do the changing here? Those outside God's will. There, that's the only way to go to heaven. That's the only way to go to heaven. Does the Lord approve of Apollosite Christians or Paulite Christians? No. Remember? I, I, I'm, I'm con 
I'm, I'm telling you, this is what you're doing. This is wrong. That's what Paul was saying. This is what you're, this is wrong. We got four minutes. Got four minutes. When I began preaching at Marseille, Hill, it, it was accident, folks. It wasn't supposed to be. Well, maybe it was. Who knows? But the, there, there was only nine of us. There were only nine of us. Me and my wife and seven women. That's all there were. Seven women. And they were older women. And we picked five of the seven up just to bring them to church so we'd have somebody in the building. I'm just, I'm just telling you. And uh, how, the way it happened was the, the little preacher before me messed up. He criticized, I mean, he came down hard on a group of faithful Christian women and really tore them up. Uh, he had done that once before and he did this again. And uh, they, the women met him at the door and said, uh, that's your last sermon to preach for us. So I was away. They got a hold of me. I came in for that evening. It was going to be back anyway. They asked me if I'd preach that evening. Then they had a little meeting, and they said, would you preach for us? And I thought they meant, till you find somebody. <laughs> Fifty years later, they're still, we're still looking, you know. But that's the way, that's the way that it all began. Now, I couldn't afford to go to, to school. I was married. I had bills that I accumulated. I wasn't going to ask the church to pay my bills. I didn't feel like I could afford to go to, church, to, to school. So I began taking classes at UCA. But I began auditing some Bible classes at Central Baptist College in Conway. You, you with me? I'm just auditing that because they don't charge you <laughs> if you audit. But I got to know some wonderful people, wonderful men, and they got to know me and everything. They knew, my, they knew where I was from and knew where they were from. One day, we were 1 Corinthians chapter 1, <laughs> verse 10 through 12. And that's what, what the professor was covering. And he said, you know, there are, some, there are some in this class that claim to be of Christ. And every eye turned and looked at me. Because folks, that's all I ever want to be. How about you? That's all I ever want to be. I don't want to be, I don't want to be grandizing some man by using his name. You with me? Who's to have the preeminence? And we'll study this next week. Who's to have the preeminence in the church? Jesus Christ. I just want to be of Christ. How about you? That's all I want. And I think I'm talking to people who want the very same thing. Any questions? Anything? We're going to do our best to finish next week, okay? Don't miss now. Don't miss. We're going to do our best to finish next week. And uh, we'll, we'll be in even more hurry than we are right now. But if you have someone you're studying with and you run into a question or you want run into something, here's my cell phone number. 501-472-5108. Some of you have already texted me. Some of you have already called and uh, I appreciate that because I know you're studying with folks or you're studying for yourself to be sure that you're ready to study with your friends, study with your family, study with those people you want to see go to heaven so badly. All right? If I can help you, let me know. Let's bow together in prayer. We'll be dismissed. Anything we need to say? Anything? Remember my family in your prayers. We don't know... We don't know any details as far, as far as funerals and things. But some of you will know Doug Riley. Some of you men will know Doug Riley. Doug was for years the transportation manager for Associated Milk Producers Incorporated, AMPI. And uh, 
Uh, so some of you will remember him, will know him. You won't know him as a Christian because he's only been a Christian for six years for about six weeks, okay? But you'll know him. But remember my family in your prayers. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the day and the many blessings we're enjoying in it. Thank you for this wonderful congregation. Thank you for their desire to be about doing your will, to know what your will for their lives is, and then to do it. We pray, Heavenly Father, for each and every member here. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, whom we seek to honor and glory in our lives.